So we're a community-led charity and we work on a local scale to benefit people in the environment. We'd like to see a future where everybody's able to heat their homes affordably, eat well and tread more lightly on the planet. And we work towards that by doing a, a wide range of projects. We run talks, events, workshops with the local community and also with local organisations and um, school groups and youth groups or just with members of the public to engage them in various topics. They sort of change year to year but at the moment our priorities are encouraging people to reduce waste by reusing, repairing and reducing more. Uh, so for that we have fix-it events where you can bring items to get them repaired. We have workshops where you can learn the skills to maintain things yourself. Um, also sewing workshops where you can learn how to repair and upcycle your clothes. We also do swap events and big sort of talks and public events where people can learn about the problem of waste and how they can combat it in day-to-day -day life um, and how easy it is to reduce. This is a programme called Living Well on a Budget. It's a programme of six weeks and every week we get together for about two hours and we cook a different recipe every week. And the idea is to work with the group and as we cook we talk and we talk about what we're cooking and why we're cooking it. So it's looking at the ingredients, the balance of a healthy diet, but also ways in which you can save money by planning your meals, thinking what you're going to do. Um, and then also thinking about reducing food waste. So again, it's choosing the ingredients, planning meals ahead, and at the same time you save money. Um, so it's very, it's very fun thing to do. You know, everyone enjoys it. So we come together as a group every week, and we've got a kind of social element to it. They enjoy it. They're going away with, um, yeah, new skills, new confidence, new ways of looking at food and trying things out. At the end of the day, they take away the dish that they've cooked and take it home to their families. We've got a large number of volunteers and it's grown every year um, and they're really a key part of the organisation. We have volunteers that help out in the High Street Hub and they are sort of the public facing volunteers. They, they help run the day-to-day -day activities in the Hub and communicate with the public. High Street Hub's really important. We've had a, a shop on the High Street since we started in 2010 and it's always been a really important part of what we do. It's a very friendly and open um, project. Anybody can walk through the door and we really want people who are just passing, who maybe might not feel comfortable picking up the phone or asking for help, to be able to just pop in really informally and friendly and have a chat with us. We have media volunteers who help with our website, um, our blog and our social media. And we have food volunteers who help out by preparing food at our events and are also learning cooking skills themselves. Um, we'll be looking for more volunteers that might have skills in maintenance or in, um, in sewing that can actually help out with those two. So they help out at our community gardens up at Ravens Craig and Dunnacare Park. The project here at Dunnacair is basically about two things. It's about uh, increasing biodiversity and it's also very much about the volunteers themselves and the benefits they get out of coming and volunteering for us, as well as what we get from the volunteers working for Green and Concordia. Yeah. Uh, I enjoy restoring the park to um, sort of a closer thing to its natural beauty than it has been in the last few years. I enjoy weeding. So because there's such a lot of invasive weeds that come into our little patches that we need to try and keep them, you know, so that the flowers can flourish. Personally, it just makes me feel like I'm doing something good for nature. The biodiversity here, um, the, the, the whole area, the whole park was very much uh, short grass and they've set aside an area for improving biodiversity and what they've done here is they've um, planted wildflower meadows, lots of lots of wildflowers in among it all. And uh, Greener Kakodi has established some uh, edible landscapes, as they call them. Um, they're, they're gardens that are made up with ground plants, 
um, shrub plants and some that will develop into trees. It's a, this is a really brilliant project. It, it's, it makes it, this has made a huge difference to the park and it, it's helped to regenerate the park. I mean, you'll have heard that we've planted over 600 trees, for example, native woodland. We've planted shrubs uh, and that's extended the tree belt. This, is, this area is it's helped encourage biodiversity and you can actually see it and more people use it. It's a much more interesting area and it is a, it's generally good fun. The, the crack's good, the company's good. Uh, the organisation here, Kirkcaldy, is very, very good to look after you and they make you feel welcome and that's, that's important. Well, we've got a very mixed group of volunteers from um, all different ages and sort of from different um, areas, different um, backgrounds. Um, some of them are here because they're retired, some of them are here because they can't get jobs, some of them are here because they want to get jobs and they think the experience will be good for them, and some of them just need good social contact. And the good thing about um, what's happened here is that um, we are helping some people to get jobs, the ones that want it. We're also helping them to, first of all, learn about um, the environment, but also to learn about each other quite a lot. So a lot of the people who um, maybe are more confident in general are learning now to help all the others and to sort of keep them involved in the, in the work that goes on here. It's the diversity of people that you meet uh, and it's, it's trying to do a lot of things which improve the quality of life in and around Kirkcaldy. Uh, the idea of greener Kirkcaldy is, is, is really important. It, I mean, this is a green project. It's helping to restore the environment. It's helping to improve the environment, and that's part of what greener Kirkcaldy does. But it's got a good, it's got a very very good social mix. You meet people from a huge range of different backgrounds. So we've been working here at Ravens Craig um, since 2012. Um, we have an orchard up at the top of the site and we grow fruit trees there. We've got 70 fruit trees altogether. Most of them are apple trees, um, which are mostly Scottish varieties. We also have pears, plums, cherries and hazelnuts. Um, we also have a, a training allotment here behind us and um, we have a group of volunteers that come along on Friday mornings, Saturday afternoons and um, they grow vegetables mostly. Um, they spend a lot of time growing from seeds. We Plant, we do weeding, watering, um, and looking after the, the plants in the allotment site. I was bringing my son out because he likes to get the experience and he really enjoys gardening. I suppose it's really meeting people and socialising, just getting out and talking to people and seeing what their experiences are like. It's very therapeutic, I think. It's a very calm and peaceful place for people to come along to. Um, some of the people are looking for work, so they get skills um, that can help them to in their job searches. Um, some people are here for the social benefits of it. Um, it's a good place to make friends and to um, spend some time outdoors. It's healthy um, and they take home vegetables as well. So hopefully we're encouraging people to, to eat more veg and to be a bit more healthy generally. Camera really enjoys watering all the plants, getting the water from the water butts, using the watering cans feeding the plants, pruning, a lot of different things. Um, I think they all enjoy different parts of it. For some people um, it's a social event, they get out of the house. Um, for other people it's a chance to make friends. Um, and other people like gardening, they like to be out in the fresh air and doing stuff. Volunteers are sort of the main, one of the main parts of our organisation. We couldn't do any of the events we do or most of the projects without them. We've got over 50 volunteers, and some of them have been with us for years and yeah, they basically, they run parts of our organisation. Mercy Kingdom Energy Service um, supports people that are in fuel poverty or in danger of being in fuel poverty around the whole of Fife. Um, by teaming up with Standing, um, we've managed to reach all the homes in Fife, we cover all the postcodes, and CARF, Citizens Advice Rights Fife, who give benefit advice to deliver our fuel poverty project, Cozy Kingdom. Um, so anyone that wants energy advice or finds herself in, in poverty or needs any support at all, the Cozy Kingdom could be there to help them. With Cozy Kingdom we find the participants in, in some really tricky situations. They could be in major fuel debt, they can just be refusing to, to put their heating on and choosing to, to spend their money on what they feel is, is more beneficial 
you know, eating. Sometimes people have the, the choice between eating and heating and it just shouldn't, shouldn't be these days. What will initially happen is the referrals will, will come into our office and then we will deploy an energy advisor who will go and do a, a home visit. Um, so it's, it's nice, it's in the comfort, comfort of your own home. The energy advisor can see everything around them within the home. You know, he can look at any bills that you've got queries with. He can see the, the measures that we could be installing through our, our handy service um, and the support that we can give. He can show and demonstrate how to control heating and, and just very quick wins as well. You know, closing doors behind you, half filling kettles, all the simple things that people often forget when, when we're out in the home. Go out to have a look at people's homes, assess how they use their energy, who's their energy company and how to stay warm within their home. I mean there's a variety of common problems, there's never just one or two. Uh, one of the most basic ones we see is people that get caught up in fuel debt. Uh, generally that happens mainly through when you're in a credit meter. Uh, pre people with prepayment meters see the money going down so they replace it. People that are in credit meters only get a bill every three months, suddenly they get a bill for £400, they realise they can't pay it, they're then stuck, they're then caught in this loop and they need advice from us to try and get it back on their feet. One of the first things we'll try and do is assess how much the money is valued that they're trying to pay back. We can refer them to external agencies that will help with funding, but what we generally will do is get a prepayment meter fitted if possible, that way we can control how much the debt is repaid by. Some of the most simple problems is just how to operate your heating system effectively. Most uh, installers, once they've fitted a boiler or a new heating system, they'll just say, there's the booklet, leave it at that, you'll be fine. And then you go in and they've found that they haven't switched or touched anything in 12 years since they've been there. So you now explain how the things work, what they can touch, they won't do any damage. And then once they get more used to it, they can control the heat more effectively in the house. We then go through what procedures could we do to further help them. I've now got it's the, the light bulbs and I've got a thermal a curtain at the door because that's where a lot of the heat was going out was around the door. So I've now got that and the radiators, the outside radiators have got a backing on them, silver backing thing on them. That again was done through Greener Kirkcaldy. Well they gave us information on uh, energy conservation, uh, the handyman, system. They have noticed the rooms don't take as long to heat up as they do because we've had the heating on because you feel the cold more. Yeah, had the, the heating room, on uh, The rooms don't take as long to heat up as they did before so that must be due to the panel. Yeah, because we've had to put the heating off after a short period of time because it's, it, we feel that especially in the living room here yeah. it, uh, it does get uh, Which was always a colder quicker. room than anybody yeah, else. Yeah, because it's quite a reasonable sized room. If I hadn't phoned Green Kirkcaldy to start with, I would never have had all the things I have. You know, it's really made a difference for me financially and in the house as well. We get all these, all these pros, you know, that, uh, but we don't have to sacrifice anything whatsoever. You know, it's not as if we've got to sacrifice something to gain something. It's just a win-win situation. You know, after we've been in our home visits, We'll follow up after three months and after a year to make sure that these people aren't left. Um, you know, we continually monitor their progress and ensure that once they've been removed from fuel poverty or helped along the way, that they'll continue up the progress and not have to worry about you know fuel poverty down the line. Last year, we managed over 700 homes, uh, and that and just in one year, which which was fantastic. This year we're, we're looking to increase that to, to over a thousand homes. Um, we know over Scotland there's over 800,000 people in fuel poverty and we know that in Fife you know, it's, it's over 80,000 um, and those are the kind of people that we need to, to get out and reach quickly. Mm -hmm.